Hey there, it's been a while since I did a LightWave tutorial and I'm going to show you a new uh, rigging setup. I learned this from a, a Blender uh, uh, book, a uh, book on animating and Blender. This is a hand setup that uses IK for the fingers instead of FK. As you can see, I have a hand here with um, just some bones, one bone for each finger. And uh, with this setup, I can rotate the finger around. And also, just by only by scaling this bone, I can get the finger to curl. Okay, so if I selected all these bones here, all I would have to do to get all these fingers to curl at once is just scale these bones. And as you can see, it looks, it, it gives you a nice, very realistic motion. And then you could scale these fingers back around. Okay, okay now let me show you how I did this. Uh, I'll just do one finger here. And, and it's going to get kind of uh, messed up here because I'm going to do this very in a very quick and dirty fashion. So you probably see the mesh get all deformed and everything. I'm going to delete the bones of that first finger. Let me um, go ahead first. I'll right click and say expand child items recursive. And let me select these bones of the first finger. And uh, I can show you uh, how it's set up on one finger here. Okay, so what I did was... Uh, I created a, a long bone that went down the center of each finger. I called this the uh, finger control. And at the end of that bone, I parented a null object. Okay. Then I created, I went ahead and created these bones for the uh, digits of the finger. Let me scale this back a little bit. And I set up IK on all these bones and uh, set their target to be this uh, null object that's parented to this control bone. So that way, when you, um, because the uh, IK is set up on these fingers, that means that they will always try to reach this target. And since the target is uh, parented to the end of this control bone, when I scale this out, the target shoots out, and those uh, finger bones will attempt to reach it. And in that attempt, they will curl over like that. So let me show you how I did this. Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to delete these bones and I'll recreate this kind of from scratch. Okay. And this might get, like I said, things will get kind of, the mesh will get all messed up and stuff, but that's okay. Let's select the hand bone and hit equal to create a child bone. All right, this is gonna be that control bone. Shift R to uh, modify its rest length. And uh, Y to rotate it. Shift R. Make it about as long as the finger is. And make it go down the center so that everything will line up right. Now we're going to make the digits of the finger. Now select the hand again and hit equal. You don't want the uh, finger joints to be the parent, uh, I'm sorry, the child of the uh, control bone because then when the control bone scales, the child bones will scale as well and you'll get this finger that just kind of puffs up. All right, so we're going to make this be our little kind of hook this bone here is going to point down and, and be a uh, sort of anchor for the IK to make the IK nice and stable. Now we'll make the uh, finger bones, hitting equal to make a child bone of this anchor. Shift R to make the rest length good. All right, so we're going to need three digits. Like I said, I'm just trying to get it done here. And then I'm going to zoom in here. So you have the three digits. And then I uh, make one more and scale that down real good. I mean, I'm sorry, not scale. Do the set the rest length real small. Okay. All right. Let's turn this over. Why? Okay. Okay. Now we got all the finger bones set up. Now the next thing I need to do in order to make sure that the IK works correctly is I need to hit Shift P for each bone that we created. And as you'll see, the uh, rotation handles will, will move. Because if you don't do this, the IK gets all messed up. Okay? All right, so now we got that. Now let's create the goal object. I'll go to my top view. My control N for new null. No, I'll call this finger goal. All right? And T to move. I'll move this to the end of that control bone that we made. Right there at the tip. All right, hit M to bring up its motion prop properties. And I'll select for the uh, parent item the, what did we call that one? We called it finger control, didn't we? Let me cancel out of that. What is this thing called? Hand 2. I'll call it finger control. 
Okay. All right. So we're going to parent this to finger control. Okay. Now let's go ahead and set up the IK for this part here. Uh, this little anchor bone unaffected by IK descendants. The next one we need to set both the heading and the pitch to IK so that that way when the finger moves left and right or up and down it will follow it uh, all around. Now the next two can only bend uh, vertically so we set the pitch to IK and leave the rest of those as set the keyframes. Then that little tiny bone that we put at the tip that's going to be the one that goes for the anchor. Okay, so we're going to set that. Um, we're going to set the target to be the finger goal. All right. Now we have our IK set up. Now the next thing we need to do is activate these. Press these bones and oops, hit R. You don't need to turn on that low bone. Make sure that you do not have the control bone set to active. Hit P and make sure that bone active is turned off. You could already see when I did that it made the mesh all get messed up because you don't want this big huge long bone affecting your mesh. It's just there to control things. Alright so we've done that and now let's enable our inverse kinematics and now we select our control bone and as you can see we can we can rotate it and when we scale it it works the way we had anticipated. And the deformations actually look pretty good for, for no kind of um, meddling with it with weight maps or anything. Uh, it's a pretty neat little system and uh, I hope you get some use out of it.